<laughs> so tonight we are, we're going to start a new series, obviously, on the Gospel of John. There are how many Gospels? Four, right? And John is the last one that we see. Um, and so tonight we're going we're gonna to kind of dive into this, um, this series, looking at that Gospel um, where we say the Gospel of Light, um, John's Gospel. But tonight I really kind of want to just barely scratch the surface of this whole book. Um, we're, we're just going to take a look at the very, very beginning of it and, and kind of why it is important, um, uh, just the beginning of John and, and kind of how that sets the stage and the lens through which we are going to read uh, the rest of John's gospel um, over the next few weeks. So um, as I was thinking about this, by the way, this is one of my, I was just telling small group leaders, this is one of my favorite passages, probably my favorite passage in all of scripture. So I was telling the small group leaders that there's a good chance that I might get really excited and talk for like an hour, um, in which Henry said that was going to be awesome and that I should talk for an hour. So everyone's okay with that? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, I'll talk for a whole hour. No, there's no way. I don't think I could do that. Um, but it is one of my favorite passages, and I think it's because it is so rich in theology and carries this really, really cool message with it. So how many of you have ever gotten addicted to a TV show before, or maybe a movie? Right? And so um, how many of you thought that you would have never, ever been addicted to that show? Right? Like... You heard about a show and you're like, man, I really, you start it and you really don't even know what all the fuss is. Like you're, you're kind of watching, you're like, man, what? Why is everybody talking about this show, right? But then, well, yeah, but sometimes you're like, is this really that good? You're watching it. And then all of a sudden something happens in a TV show, right? You call it like the hook, right? There, there's something that happens that hooks you into that TV show. And for me, uh, recently, um, I know that several of you have probably, hey, y'all take seats back there. Um, recently for me, this was a show called Stranger Things. Okay, that, okay, that TV show is nothing like the stuff I watch. That is not, that is not kind of my wheelhouse TV show. It was real sci-fi if you haven't seen it before kind of weird. I don't know. But I watched, I started the first episode because people were like, you got to check out the show. I'm watching it. And I'm like, I don't really get what's going on. Like why this is so cool. And then all of a sudden this like the upside down thing happens. I'm like hooked where I have to figure out what the heck is going on in this show. And I binge watch it for like two days, you know, and, and uh, it, it has completely sucked me in. So that hook, when we look at John's gospel and we think about things like a hook in a TV show that all of a sudden you're like, I've got to know what happens next. And we look at the gospels and we look at John's gospel then, we're like, man, John's, he was going for something different here in the very beginning. He, he was doing something a little bit different when you start reading John 1. It looks a little bit different. But what I think that John was trying to do was he was trying to produce a hook in his gospel. He was trying to hook the readers in from the very beginning. Maybe they had heard the story of Jesus before, but now they're going to hear it in a, in a completely different way. Maybe they weren't interested before, but now they might be interested with this, this interesting hook that John writes in. So I'm going to read it for you, and we're actually going to read it twice tonight, but I'm, I want to read it for you um, right now. So here's the first, oh, you know, like 16-ish verses of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into the being through the Word was life. And the life was the light for all people. 
and the light shines into the darkness, and the darkness doesn't overcome the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. And then the word became flesh and made his home among us. So what, did you, what words did you maybe hear over and over again in that passage? The word and light, right? So in, in Greek, when we see the word, word, anyone know what the Greek word is? I've probably taught on it before. Again, favorite passage. Anyone remember that? Yeah, you'd get a big gold star if you remember. It's the word, the Greek word, logos. And it means, and it means word, literally. But it also kind of translates into this word like logic or logical or reason. But what John is doing here is he's putting a new spin on an old word. He's using this word with fresh meaning that's never been used before. Again, he's writing this new hook for his readers. And what John is doing is John is making this word logos, this word logic or reason or wisdom. He's turning it into meaning that this is God's self expression of God's self. So what, is, what does that really mean, that God's expressing God's self? What he's saying is that God, the creator of all creation, was in the beginning, but is about to put on flesh. The logos, the, the essence of God that was in the beginning and that was creating in the beginning in the very beginning, is about to put on flesh and walk on creation. So why, why is this a hook? Why is this John's epic hook for the reader? For, for me, it's, it's kind of this epic hook, and, and I don't know if it is for you or not, like it gets you really engaged, but I can tell you that for the readers during the time that this had to have been a very, very intriguing passage to read, that they had to have wanted to know what is coming next. And let me kind of explain why. We're going to do something, I'm going to read the passage again in a second, but I need some people to kind of help me. Um, will you help me be my first helper? All right. I want you to help me hand these out across the room. So let's go over here and start. All right, so I need one helper right here. Will you, will you, okay, here we go. Right here. Nope. Okay, so we got one there. All right, go. I need one person to help me back here. Will you go? Jan, will you help me? All right. I kind of want these. We got a few more. Oh, geez, yes. Throwing it to them was a great idea. Huh. Let me tell you. All right, will you help me? We need like one more over here. Sean, will you help me? There we go. All right, I got two more. Anybody else? Will you help me? Oh, jeez. Can you really catch it? Okay. Okay, all right, let me, shh. For this, I need, don't turn it on yet. What are you doing? All right, so here's, shh, shh. I, you have to focus. Oh my, they're playing paper, rock, scissors to see who gets to do it. Uh, whatever. So, shh, shh, shh. 
Listen, listen, you gotta help me. All right, where's my furthest right here? All right, so Jen, you're gonna be one. Let's, where's my next one? Probably two right here, so you're gonna be two. All right, and three, so three. Where's next? This is probably four. You're gonna go four, you'll be five. Six. Seven is Elric. Eight, all right, turn it off. <laughs> okay, everyone, here's what, I, here's what we wanna do. Um, in, a, in a second, I'm going to have uh, Casey and the people in the media booth turn off all the lights. Shh. What? No, you're not singing. Shh. And listen, I'll, I'll probably tell you what to do if you wait a hot second. All right. So when all the lights go out in a second, Casey, will you go ahead and start doing the lights? I, still, I got these up here. I can turn off in a second. All right, so please don't use your phone lights during this either because A, I'll know that you're playing with your phone, and B, uh, B, it'll mess up what I want to do. So remember, one of the words that you heard over and over again was light and word, which means logos, which means logic, or the essence of God. So every time, shh, you're going to hear word eight times. And we're going to start over here, remember, with one. And when you hear it a second, does yours not work? Oh, my. I need a, will someone get me a replacement candle from back there? This is going just swimmingly. Oh. Oh, that, that'll work. We'll do that. Okay. Never mind. We're good. All right. We're good. Shh. 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 All right. Hey, hang with me. I know this is getting weird. Shh. 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 All right. So as I read, and every time I say that word, word, if you will turn on your candle in order, so we're going one, where's two, two, three, and on up to eight, okay? So you got to listen. And please, let's, let's listen to the scripture. You'll see my phone light because I have to have something so that I can read. I know. Shh. Hey, shh. Guys, this is about three minutes of silence. It's not all that hard. Shh. Let's listen to the word of God. Guys in the back, grow up. Seriously. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning, and everything came into being through the Word. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. And the life was the light for all people. And the light shines into the darkness. And the darkness doesn't overcome the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was, was in the world. And the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light, and the light came to his own people. And his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become children of God. Born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. 
the word became flesh and made his home among us. So if you look around the room, you have to imagine the world in which John was writing. You see, John was writing into a world that was much like this room before we lit any of the candles. It was completely dark. They were a people with no hope. And a lot of times in, in ancient, when, when we think about ancient Israel and what was going on in the Old Testament, we describe it as a world in complete darkness. And so you imagine to the people that, that John is writing to, he was writing to people that had been stuck in darkness for so long. Darkness without any hope. And so when he starts writing about the Logos, the essence of God, and how it is going to come into the world, he starts talking about how that, that essence of God is light in a dark creation. How there is now hope in what seemed like a hopeless world. And kind of like the room now, all of a sudden as he is writing this prologue, this beginning to the gospel, he starts poking holes into that darkness saying, I know that maybe you felt like you were in this place that there was no hope. That there was nothing good to come. But there is a light that is coming into creation. And it's going to be brighter than you've ever known. The hook is hope. The hook is Jesus. This Jesus person is going to change everything in this dark creation. If I'm honest with you young people tonight, I would say that right now I feel kind of like I'm in a place of sitting in darkness. Um, this past weekend, I, I've had some kind of family matters that have been going on in, in, in my family, and, um, and, it, and it's really been kind of weighing heavy on me and, and many family members, and we had to try and go get it all resolved, and, and honestly, it didn't get resolved. And so tonight, I, I feel like I'm still just sitting in a place of darkness. But as I stand here and I read passages like this that talk about the essence of God coming to live on creation, I'm reminded that every time that I feel like I'm sitting or standing in darkness, that Jesus is going to come and start shedding light in my darkness. Young people, as we begin this series and looking at John's gospel of light where he is he is helping, try to, trying to help people understand the light of Christ and what that means in their lives. Tonight, I want you to take a few seconds to consider where do you feel like you're sitting in darkness? Where do you feel like maybe there is just, <laughs> there is nothing that is good that is coming? And I ask you to kind of consider, too, how open are you to the idea that Jesus wants to come and start shedding light on that? That Jesus could come and make that something good and positive when before it seemed like it was in no way ever going to be good. That's the hook of this gospel, that there is a man coming. There's a man that did come, that is shedding light in all of the dark areas of our life. And that darkness will not win. And that we will one day stand completely in the light together. Let's pray. 
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this night.